Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Um, so today I'm going to talk about built-in functions in JavaScript. Because we often have to like get data or manipulate data in an array and built-in functions make that super easy. Okay, so I'm going to start by talking about map, filter and reduce. And map, filter and reduce are great methods in order to modify data or get data out of an array. I always like to visualize what I'm doing, um, so please don't mock my design skills. But this is kind of what the methods do on your array. First, let's talk about map. So I'm just going to create my array of numbers. I'm just going to use the same numbers as my example to, to keep it easy. And 33, oh, 33. I can access the map method by typing numbers.map. And this receives a function that gets invoked on every item. But now let's say I just want to multiply the value of every item by two. So I'm just going to write it down to remind myself of it. <laughs> so first we need to access the value of the current item. So I'm just going to call it number because every item represents a number. So that's a number, that's a number and every one. So I can now just say number times two, which will multiply it. However, the map method doesn't modify the original array. So I'm just going to declare a new variable called multiply numbers. I'm just going to console log it so you can see kind of the result. Next chairs. Okay, cool. So right now we have an array where the values have been multiplied by two, but we also still have our original array. So right now we multiply it, but I could also just add. So let added numbers is exactly the same number stop map, but instead of multiply, I'm just gonna say two uh, plus. Sorry. So added numbers. So now we have another array where two got added to every value. So you can see that the map method gets invoked on every value in the array. But we don't necessarily have to do something with the current value. We can maybe just log um, a simple string or something. So say log the word the string hey to the console. So again, we're going to map over the array and we're going to invoke a function on every item that will log the string hey to the console. So I hope to see six hey's to the console now. Awesome, because we have six items, so that function runs six times. And let's say we have an array of objects that represent a team. So name Lydia, age 20, and I want to have a friend as well. <laughs> oh, ah, I can't. Oh, there you go. So I'm just going to have a friend named Peter and his age is 23. So we're going to map over the team and I'm going to do something. Team member. So team member represents every object. So team member dot age plus equals 10. So what do you now expect to be logged to the console? <laughs> team. So you see that 10 got added to every age. So although the original array doesn't get modified, objects within the array do get modified. Okay, so let's get to filter. Now I'm just gonna clear everything first. Also my console. Now filter filters the array with values that you want to have. So I'm just gonna write numbers.filter and it receives a function again. And we wanna access the current values, uh, items values. I'm gonna type number, now in here, we write a condition and only the numbers for which the condition returns true will be added to a new array. And you can see that here, like condition is false or true and then added to a new array. So I'm just going to type like uh, numbers higher than 18, uh, but lower than 50 or something. That's just random. So right now I can say, okay, is the current value, so number, higher than 18? And is it lower than 50? Then this gets pushed to a new array. So it doesn't modify the original array. It's gonna make it a bit prettier. So I'm just gonna declare a new variable um, Call like filter numbers. And I'm just gonna log that to my console. Console.log filter numbers. Oh, not clear, not index chest. 
Cool, so for these two values, for 42 and for 33, the condition that the number should be higher than 18 and lower than 50 return true. So they get pushed to our new array. So I don't know, we can change that logic as well. Um, let's say that I only want to get even numbers. So modulo two equals zero. And I can just run it again. And these are all the even numbers of the array or maybe all the odd numbers just to Cool. So yeah, with filter, you can get data out of your array that you really care about. So yeah, filter has a condition and only for the values for which the condition returns true will be pushed to a new array. So let's get to reduce. So reduce might look a bit creepy, but it's actually really not that difficult. It's important though to see that you have an accumulator and a current value. Um, and here I just add them to each other. So numbers.reduce, and again it receives a function. But previously, we always gave the function one argument, but with reduce we actually passed two arguments, which is the accumulator and the current value. Um, I'm just gonna type that real quick, accumulator and current value. So in my example on the left, you can see the accumulator and the current value. Now the current value is equal to the value in the array. So at the start, the accumulator is zero, plus six is six, and six plus 42, which is the current item, results in 48, and then plus the current item is four, results in 52, which is then the accumulator, and so on. So I'm just gonna say accumulator plus current item. I just do plus randomly, because I want to add them, could have been anything. And again, this doesn't modify the original array, so I have to create a new variable. I'm just gonna log that to my console. Reduced value. Cool, so 222 is the value of all my values combined in my array. And see that it's a number and not a new array. So I could do anything here, like minus or something, which would result in minus 210, or um, multiply it. Oh, I'm in a typo. <laughs> I meant multiply, normal multiply. Big number. So yeah, reduce is really not that difficult once you understand what the accumulator is and what the current value is, and that it returns a number instead of a, a new array. So just an overview of all the methods that I covered today. So math invokes a function on every item in the array and that can return anything. It can either have something to do with the current item's value or just log something to the console, return something and so on. Filter has a condition and only the items for which the condition returns true will be pushed to a new array. And then reduce who has an accumulator and a current value and you can do something with these two values like add them to each other which then results in one big value, which combine all the values of the array. So I'm just going to do all of them now. <laughs> so I can do reduce and um, multiply numbers is numbers of math, like I did in the first example, times two, and filter numbers, which is numbers dot filter. And then number is, um, I don't know, higher than 20, just to keep it a bit small. So I'm just gonna log them all to my console again. Numbers and filtered numbers. And I'm just gonna run that. So now we have two arrays, one of them where we multiplied every item's value, the other one where we filtered the array and a new value. Now you can see that the original array didn't get modified when I just logged numbers again. Cool, so we have so much flexibility, which is one array. So we can do whatever we want with the contents of the array, depending on what we want in our app. And especially with the ES6 arrow functions, your code gets so clean because you can just write it on one line. I definitely recommend though that you go to websites like Code Wars or HackerRank to kind of code around with it because um, you definitely learn so much more by actually using it in your code uh, instead of just like listening to me talking about it. So good luck and happy coding!